part one chapter three sections three and four of the possessed by fyodor dostoevsky translated by constance garnett this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by expatriate in bangor maine chapter three section three but this time to my surprise i found an extraordinary change in him he pounced on me with a sort of avidity it is true as soon as i went in and began listening to me but with such a distracted air that at first he evidently did not take in my words but as soon as i pronounced the name of karmazinov he suddenly flew into a frenzy don't speak of him don't pronounce that name he exclaimed almost in a fury here look read it read it he opened the drawer and threw on the table three small sheets of paper covered with a hurried pencil scroll all from varvara petrovna the first letter was dated the day before yesterday the second had come yesterday and the last that day an hour before their contents were quite trivial and all referred to karmazinov and betrayed the vain and fussy uneasiness of varvara petrovna and her apprehension that karmazinov might forget to pay her a visit here is the first one dating from two days before probably there had been one also three days before and possibly another four days before as well if he deigns to visit you to-day not a word about me i beg not the faintest hint don't speak of me don't mention me v s the letter of the day before if he decides to pay you a visit this morning i think the most dignified thing would be not to receive him that's what i think about it i don't know what you think v s to-day's the last i feel sure that you're in a regular litter in clouds of tobacco smoke i'm sending you maria and Fomushka they'll tidy you up in half an hour and don't hinder them but go and sit in the kitchen while they clear up i'm sending you a bokhara rug and two china vases i've long been meaning to make you a present of them and i'm sending you my teniers too for a time you can put the vases in the window and hang the teniers on the right under the portrait of goethe it will be more conspicuous there and it's always light there in the morning if he does turn up at last receive him with the utmost courtesy but try and talk of trifling matters of some intellectual subject and behave as though you had seen each other lately not a word about me perhaps i may look in on you in the evening v s p s if he does not come to-day he won't come at all i read and was amazed that he was in such excitement over such trifles looking at him inquiringly i noticed that he had had time while i was reading to change the everlasting white tie he always wore for a red one his hat and stick lay on the table he was pale and his hands were positively trembling i don't care a hang about her anxieties he cried frantically in response to my inquiring look je m'en fiche she has a face to be excited about karmazinov and she does not answer my letters here is my unopened letter which she sent me back yesterday here on the table under the book under l'homme qui rit was it to me that she's wearing herself out over nikolai je m'en fiche et je proclame ma liberté au diable la karmazinov au diable la lemke i've hidden the vases in the entry and the teniers in the chest of drawers and i have demanded that she is to see me at once do you hear i've insisted i've sent her just such a scrap of paper a pencil scroll unsealed by nastasya and i'm waiting i want darya pavlovna to speak to me with her own lips before the face of heaven or at least before you vous me seconderez n'est-ce pas comme ami et témoin i don't want to have to blush to lie i don't want secrets i won't have secrets in this matter let them confess everything to me openly frankly honourably and then then perhaps i may surprise the whole generation by my magnanimity am i a scoundrel or not my dear sir he concluded suddenly looking menacingly at me as though i had considered him a scoundrel i offered him a sip of water i had never seen him like this before all the while he was talking he kept running from one end of the room to the other but he suddenly stood still before me in an extraordinary attitude can you suppose he began again with hysterical haughtiness looking me up and down can you imagine that i stepan verkovensky cannot find in myself the moral strength to take my bag my beggar's bag and laying it on my feeble shoulders to go out at the gate and vanish for ever when honour and the great principle of independence demand it it's not the first time that stepan verkovensky has had to repel despotism by moral force even though it be the despotism of a crazy woman 
that is the most cruel and insulting despotism which can exist on earth although you have i fancy forgotten yourself so much as to laugh at my phrase my dear sir oh you don't believe that i can find the moral strength in myself to end my life as a tutor in a merchant's family or to die of hunger in a ditch answer me answer at once do you believe it or don't you believe it but i was purposely silent i even affected to hesitate to wound him by answering in the negative but to be unable to answer affirmatively in all this nervous excitement of his there was something which really did offend me and not personally oh no but i will explain later on he positively turned pale perhaps you are bored with me g this is my surname and you would like not to come and see me at all he said in that tone of pale composure which usually precedes some extraordinary outburst i jumped up in alarm at that moment nastasya came in and without a word handed stepan trofimovitch a piece of paper on which something was written in pencil he glanced at it and flung it to me on the paper in varvara petrovna's hand three words were written stay at home stepan trofimovitch snatched up his hat and stick in silence and went quickly out of the room mechanically i followed him suddenly voices and sounds of rapid footsteps were heard in the passage he stood still as though thunderstruck it's liputin i am lost he whispered clutching at my arm at the same instant liputin walked into the room section four why he should be lost owing to liputin i did not know and indeed i did not attach much significance to the words i put it all down to his nerves his terror however was remarkable and i made up my mind to keep a careful watch on him the very appearance of liputin as he came in assured us that he had on this occasion a special right to come in in spite of the prohibition he brought with him an unknown gentleman who must have been a new arrival in the town in reply to the senseless stare of my petrified friend he called out immediately in a loud voice i'm bringing you a visitor a special one i make bold to intrude on your solitude mr kirillov a very distinguished civil engineer and what's more he knows your son the much esteemed pyotr stepanovitch very intimately and he has a message from him he's only just arrived the message is your own addition the visitor observed curtly there's no message at all but i certainly do know verkovensky i left him in the x province ten days ahead of us stepan trofimovitch mechanically offered his hand and motioned him to sit down he looked at me he looked at liputin and then as though suddenly recollecting himself sat down himself though he still kept his hat and stick in his hands without being aware of it bah but you were just going out yourself i was told that you were quite knocked up with work yes i'm ill and you see i meant to go for a walk i stepan trofimovitch checked himself quickly flung his hat and stick on the sofa and turned crimson meantime i was hurriedly examining the visitor he was a young man about twenty-seven decently dressed well made slender and dark with a pale rather muddy-coloured face and black lustreless eyes he seemed rather thoughtful and absent-minded spoke jerkily and ungrammatically transposing words in rather a strange way and getting muddled if he attempted a sentence of any length liputin was perfectly aware of stepan trofimovitch's alarm and was obviously pleased at it he sat down in a wicker chair which he dragged almost into the middle of the room so as to be at an equal distance between his host and the visitor who had installed themselves on sofas on opposite sides of the room his sharp eyes darted inquisitively from one corner of the room to another it's a long while since i've seen petrusha you met abroad stepan trofimovitch managed to mutter to the visitor both here and abroad alexey nilitch has only just returned himself after living four years abroad put in liputin he has been travelling to perfect himself in his speciality and has come to us because he has good reasons to expect a job on the building of our railway bridge and he's now waiting for an answer about it he knows the drozdovs and lizaveta nikolaevna through pyotr stepanovitch the engineer sat as it were with a ruffled air and listened with awkward impatience it seemed to me that he was angry about something he knows nikolai vsevolodovitch too do you know nikolai vsevolodovitch inquired stepan trofimovitch i know him too it's 
it's a very long time since i've seen petrusha and i feel i have so little right to call myself a father c'est le mot i how did you leave him oh yes i left him he comes himself replied mr kirillov in haste to be rid of the question again he certainly was angry he's coming at last i you see it's very long since i've seen petrusha stepan trofimovitch could not get away from this phrase now i expect my poor boy to whom to whom i have been so much to blame that is i mean to say when i left him in petersburg i i in short i looked on him as a non-entity quelque chose dans ce genre he was a very nervous boy you know emotional and very timid when he said his prayers going to bed he used to bow down to the ground and make the sign of the cross on his pillow that he might not die in the night je m'en souviens enfin no artistic feeling whatever not a sign of anything higher of anything fundamental no embryo of a future ideal c'était comme un petit idiot but i'm afraid i am incoherent excuse me you came upon me you say seriously that he crossed his pillow the engineer asked suddenly with marked curiosity yes he used to all right i just asked go on stepan trofimovitch looked interrogatively at liputin i'm very grateful to you for your visit but i must confess i i'm not in a condition just now uh, but allow me to ask where you are lodging at filipov's in bogoyalvlensky street ah that's where shatov lives i observed involuntarily yes so in the very same house cried liputin only shatov lodges above in the attic while he's down below at captain lebyatkin's he knows shatov too and he knows shatov's wife he was very intimate with her abroad comment do you really know anything about that unhappy marriage de ces pauvres amis and that woman cried stepan trofimovitch carried away by sudden feeling you are the first man i've met who has known her personally and if only what nonsense the engineer snapped out flushing all over how you add to things liputin i've not seen shatov's wife i've only once seen her in the distance and not at all close i know shatov why do you add things of all sorts he turned round sharply on the sofa clutched his hat then laid it down again and settling himself down once more as before fixed his angry black eyes on stepan trofimovitch with a sort of defiance i was at a loss to understand such strange irritability excuse me stepan trofimovitch observed impressively i understand that it may be a very delicate subject no sort of delicate subject in it and indeed it's shameful and i didn't shout at you that it's nonsense but at liputin because he adds things excuse me if you took it to yourself i know shatov but i don't know his wife at all i don't know her at all i understand i understand and if i insisted it's only because i'm very fond of our poor friend notre irascible ami and have always taken an interest in him in my opinion that man changed his former possibly over youthful but yet sound ideas too abruptly and now he says all sorts of things about notre saint russi to such a degree that i've long explained this upheaval in his old constitution i can only call it that to some violent shock in his family life and in fact to his unsuccessful marriage i who know my poor russia like the fingers on my hand and have devoted my whole life to the russian people i can assure you that he does not know the russian people and what's more i don't know the russian people at all either and i haven't time to study them the engineer snapped out again and again he turned sharply on the sofa stepan trofimovitch was pulled up in the middle of his speech he is studying them he is studying them interposed liputin he has already begun the study of them and is writing a very interesting article dealing with the causes of the increase of suicide in russia and generally speaking the causes that lead to the increase or decrease of suicide in society he has reached amazing results the engineer became dreadfully excited you have no right at all he muttered wrathfully i'm not writing an article i'm not going to do silly things i asked you confidentially quite by chance there's no article at all i'm not publishing and you haven't the right liputin was obviously enjoying himself i beg your pardon perhaps i made a mistake in calling your literary work an article he is only collecting observations and the essence of the question or so to say its moral aspect he is not touching at all and indeed he rejects morality itself altogether 
and holds with the last new principle of general destruction for the sake of ultimate good he demands already more than a hundred million heads for the establishment of common sense in europe many more than they demanded at the last peace congress alexey nilitch goes further than any one in that sense the engineer listened with a pale and contemptuous smile for half a minute every one was silent all this is stupid liputin mr kirillov observed at last with a certain dignity if i by chance had said some things to you and you caught them up again as you like but you have no right for i never speak to any one i scorn to talk if one has a conviction then it's clear to me but you're doing foolishly i don't argue about things when everything's settled i can't bear arguing i never want to argue and perhaps you are very wise stepan trofimovitch could not resist saying i apologize to you but i am not angry with any one here the visitor went on speaking hotly and rapidly i have seen few people for four years for four years i have talked little and have tried to see no one for my own objects which do not concern any one else for four years liputin found this out and is laughing i understand and don't mind i'm not ready to take offence only annoyed at his liberty and if i don't explain my ideas to you he concluded unexpectedly scanning us all with resolute eyes it's not at all that i'm afraid of your giving information to the government that's not so please do not imagine nonsense of that sort no one made any reply to these words we only looked at each other even liputin forgot to snigger gentlemen i'm very sorry stepan trofimovitch got up resolutely from the sofa but i feel ill and upset excuse me ah as for us to go mr kirillov started snatching up his cap it's a good thing you told us i'm so forgetful he rose and with a good-natured air went up to stepan trofimovitch holding out his hand i'm sorry you're not well and i came i wish you every success among us answered stepan trofimovitch shaking hands with him heartily and without haste i understand that if as you say you have lived so long abroad cutting yourself off from people for objects of your own and forgetting russia you must inevitably look with wonder on us who are russians to the backbone and we must feel the same thing about you mais c'est la passera i'm only puzzled at one thing you want to build our bridge and at the same time you declare that you hold with the principle of universal destruction they won't let you build our bridge what what's that you said ah i say kirillov cried much struck and he suddenly broke into the most frank and good-humoured laughter for a moment his face took a quite childlike expression which i thought suited him particularly liputin rubbed his hand with delight at stepan trofimovitch's witty remark i kept wondering to myself why stepan trofimovitch was so frightened of liputin and why he had cried out i am lost when he heard him coming End of chapter three section four Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine.